Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72 Welcome to Wicked Wednesday, where we discuss all the new comics that's coming out this week. Every Wednesday is like Christmas for us nerds because that's when the new comics come out. These are my recommendations for the best books to pick up on Wednesday. But here's some other information first. Wicked Wednesday is not the only program I do. Go to my homepage and click on playlist and you'll see many different programs broken down in category. The top list, casting confirmations, Hollywood rumors, character study, comics for sale, and much, much more. When you click on a category, it will play all the videos in that category back to back nonstop. So you can just click on something and let it go. One of my most popular recent videos is the top 10 female comic book artists. I'm proud to have made it because these women deserve more recognition. So after you're done watching this, go into the playlist and knock yourself out and binge watch if you like. But for now, let's get started on New Comic Day. And DC Comics has given us Batman number 20. And this is the finale of his fight with Bane. Tom King is doing an excellent job as the writer and David Finch's art looks fantastic. They're continuing the tradition of the Tim Sale variants as well. Look out for a Bane miniseries later this year. Next up is Harley Quinn number 17. Amanda Connor is writing and still doing the covers on these. Unlike the other DC books, there's literally no change in tone from the new 52 Harley to the Rebirth Harley, which is fine because Harley Quinn is like DC's Deadpool, a way over the top sense of humor that can't exist in its own universe. And that's a wacky zany one that works for the character. We're also getting more Frank Cho variants and I'm really loving what they're doing with these. Hiring Frank for the variants is the best thing ever. Next up is Superman number 20. This is part one of a new story arc called Superman Black. Peter J. Tamazi is doing incredible work with Superman. He's such a powerful character that it's hard to write for because who's going to challenge him? In this story arc, it turns out that his son is losing his powers. If you haven't been paying attention, the son of Superman and Batman have teamed up for a new comic called Super Sons, which is also written by Peter J. Tomasi. That guy's on fire. Superman is in good hands with him. Here's some history for you. Superman number 20, volume one from 1943. The character was only five years old at the time of this. And now he's turning 80 years old in 2018. And Action Comics issue 1000 is going to drop in. So DC is building up to something very big for that occasion. So you might want to get on board right now. Next up is Deathstroke number 16. And he's out to revenge the death of someone close to him. The Bill Sinkowitz art style really works for this character on cover A. And the cover B version is done by Shane Davis. Deathstroke is the template for all anti-hero mercenaries after him. Even Deadpool. There would be no Wade Wilson unless there was a Slade Wilson first. Next up is Cyborg number 11. This is probably a title you haven't picked up in a while, but it is worth another review. In this one, he takes on a new villain called 8-Bit. If you grew up in the 80s and played arcade games, then you know what that means. Some very elementary looking visuals in your video games. The cover B variant looks like this, but I would go ahead and go with the cover A. It's much better to me. Next up, let's see what Marvel was up to. And some people think I hate Marvel because I've been so critical of them lately, but I really don't. Here's what they got this week. First up is all new Wolverine number 19. This is the start of a new story arc called The Stars Come Death. There's a cornerbox variant too, which looks like Batman with Wolverine claws. Come on, Marvel's gotta know the resemblance. There's no way that's a coincidence. The Venom variants are still there as well. This has been released before. It's just a black and white version. Next up is the Champions number seven, where they throw down with a new group of rogues called the Freelancers. The Champions has got animated series written all over it, so you should be following the series when no one's paying attention. And the Freelancers look like natural good arch enemies for them to have. Next up is Iron Fist number two, and Danny Rand is back with his own solo title. And the Netflix show has been taking a beating in terms of critical acclaim. I think they were rushing to get to the Defenders too fast. The show could have been much better, but the comic is off to a good start. And the cover B variant is superior. Iron Fist the comic is definitely worth checking out. Next up is America number two. This is the second release of the Latin female superhero, America Chavez. There's good and bad to talk about, so let's start with the good. And the good is the cover itself. On the left is Carol Danvers, AKA Captain Marvel. And on the right is Spectrum. They fight right beside her and the superhero team called the Ultimates. This is one of the best looking covers in comics this year. And it actually pays homage to Beyonce in her formation video. Once Beyonce fans find out about this, it could make this book disappear off shelves real quick. And now the bad. I previously named America number one the spec pick of the week a while ago. And what I didn't know is that the interior artwork would be so lame. The main cover and the variant covers rocked, but that interior artwork looked like something from Squirrel Girl. I think they're pitching this character at a much younger audience. But I was expecting to see her the way they draw her in the Ultimates. 
I still believe the character has a very important future, so you want to pick up Vengeance number one, which is her first appearance. Issue number two also comes with an Art Adams variant, which looks very sexy. And people are going to ask a lot of money for it. And this Marguerite Savage variant looks impressive as well. But like I always say, don't blow your money on variants. I'll be getting the regular cover because of the Beyonce homage, and it's going to be cover price. Next up is Jessica Jones number seven, and I am absolutely in love with these David Mack watercolor covers. The cover B variant is strong as well, showing her knocking somebody out of her office window. Jessica Jones is not to be trifled with. Next up is Hawkeye number five and this is the Kate Bishop version of Hawkeye. She's a female hero working as a private eye in the Marvel Universe based in Los Angeles. Jessica Jones who we just talked about is a female superhero in the Marvel Universe who is also a detective but based in New York and she's been doing it much longer so it would make sense that she would be like a mentor to young Kate Bishop. Hawkeye is a very funny book and would make a great read for a teenage girl that's just getting into comics. Next up is Spider-Man Deadpool number 16. And this is a cash grab for Marvel because it's their most popular character of all time. And he's paired with their most popular character at the moment. A ongoing series really doesn't make sense for this odd couple because they're so different in terms of philosophy. Sure, Spider-Man is a sarcastic smart ass, but underneath it all, he understands that with great power comes great responsibility. Deadpool, on the other hand, also is a sarcastic smart ass, but he understands with great power comes irresponsibility. Spider-Man protects for the good of the city and for humanity. Humanity and he doesn't kill. Deadpool says screw humanity. He does his work as a mercenary. If you pay him, he'll do any job. And killing? No problem. But I'm probably overthinking this. The book is not intended to be taken seriously. Next up is Star Wars number 30. And I'm trying to figure out when Jason Aaron sleeps because he's writing this as well as Suttering Bastards, Unworthy Thor, and much, much more all at the same time. Marvel is really taking care of the Star Wars franchise and they have one of the top five writers and top five artists in Salvador La Roca doing the interior. It looks just stunning. They are continuing the action figure variants as well, but they're running out of characters and they're going to their real D list of characters at this point. People you never heard of unless you're the most hardcore Star Wars geek. There's also a 40th anniversary cover special. I was young, but I was old enough to remember when Star Wars came out. It was a big deal in the summer of 1977. To some of you, that may sound really, really old, but hey, you got two choices in life. You're either gonna be old one day or you're gonna be dead. Pick one. Also dropping this week is Star Wars Rogue One Adaption, issue one of a six part miniseries. This is simply them copying the movie beat for beat and putting it in comic book format. So you're not getting anything new here. But the art looks fantastic. And this is for Star Wars completists who have to have everything with the Star Wars name on it. Next up is the Resurrection tie-ins. This is relating to the storyline about what happens after the war between the Inhumans and the X-Men. Which includes Royals Number 1, which is a story about the Inhuman Royal Court and their search for lost secrets. And that's a great cover. And of course that means more variants such as this Neil Adams classic variant shown here and this Gorgon Royal Knight action figure variant by John Tyler Christopher. The hip hop variants have been very popular as well so they're continuing those. This one shows Medusa with her haircut saying bald which pays homage to Frank Ocean's 2016 release. I don't think Frank Ocean is really hip hop, but that's just nitpicking. Next up is X-Men Gold. And as explained in last week's X-Men Prime, Kitty Pryde returns to lead the X-Men. This issue will have a gazillion variants as well, but they're not as strong as the Inhuman ones are. Marvel is scoring big time this week from re-releasing giant size X-Men for only $1. This will be a reprint of the classic 1975 title and is the first appearance of Colossus, Storm, and Nightcrawler and the third appearance of Wolverine. And that is more than awesome. But wait, that's not all. Marvel is also re-releasing X-Men number one from 1963. It is a $1 reprint and it's the first appearance of Professor X, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Iceman, Beast, and the Angel. And don't forget Magneto. That is absolutely loaded. Now, my speculation pick of the week feature is only for new material, but reprints like this, you must have. Your store will have them, but they will sell out fast. Call them now and reserve your copy. Some may have limits on it, because some price gougers may try to go and buy all the copies for a dollar and hoard the market and then try to sell them for $5. I'm all for capitalism, but I'm not for greed. Marvel seems to be promoting the X-Men again as the war between Fox and Marvel over. They recently worked together on the Legion TV show. Who knows? Maybe they got some big announcement at Comic-Con that they're holding on to right now. But that's just rumor mill. I don't have any evidence to back that up yet, so I can't go any further. Next up is our report on independent comics and small publishers. First up is Eleanor and the Egret, number one from Aftershock Comics. 
This is about a female art thief in Paris. The creative team is a team up of two legends. That would be John Lehman, who claimed fame as the writer and creator of Chew, one of the strangest books to ever become a hit. And the art is done by Sam Keith. And this is a departure from him because he's best known for his monster drawings. The way he used to draw Venom and Wolverine and the Hulk, he had a very distinctive horror style in which he drew them. He took his talents to Image, where he put out Max in the early 90s, doing more of the monster genre, which he was best known for. So will fans recognize his new work? We'll see. Next up is Sovereigns number zero from Dynamite Entertainment. This comic is going to reunite their licensed properties, Solar, Magnus, and Turok. This cover doesn't do a good job of selling you on that. There's some variants, but they don't show them either. I recommend this because it's only $1. That's Dynamite's way of getting you to try it out. Hey, try it out. It's only $1. But seriously, they should put the heroes on the cover. But what do I know? Next up is Riverdale number one. There was a Riverdale one shot in support of the television show, but this is an ongoing comic now. They updated Archie and took him out of the 1950s and brought it into the 21st century for a change and giving it a little more edge. Some people think they've gone too far in our trying way too hard to make it relevant to today. That's for you to decide if it's for you or not. It appears they're hedging their bets with the release of Little Archie number one. This one shot makes them little tiny kids and a whole lot more innocent than the stuff I just showed you. The Archie character made its first appearance way back in 1941 in Pep Comics number 22. It was just a backup story at first, but it proved so popular it took over Pep and then they spin it off into its own title, which is still around today. Next up, let's see what Image is up to. They always bring the pain. And that's going to be Sun Bakery number two. This title is an anthology, meaning it's a series of different short stories contained within it. It was published before, but on a smaller label. So this is a chance to get seen by more people. There are very few anthologies in comics these days. So this is why I like this. If you like offbeat sci-fi, then there's something in here that you're going to like. I guarantee it. Next up is Mighty Man number one, and this is produced by Eric Larson, who's a founder of Image Comics. And this is a one shot. It's all about wish fulfillment. It's that archetype that was made famous by Shazam. Because in this one shot, a seven year old boy inherits the mantle of the world's mightiest man. It's not meant to be taken serious. It's just a lot of fun. Next up is Rock Candy Mountain number one. This was created and written by Cal Starks, who's known for Sex Castle. And it details the magical world of hobos. It's written with a ridiculous sense of humor and it also does not take itself too seriously. Next up is The Walking Dead 166 and this is a no brainer. They're using material directly from the comic for the television show. This is why this show may never end because the source material in the comic is still as good as ever. Robert Kirkman is a very busy guy but he's not phoning this in. He's doing a great job of keeping it going. Next up is We Stand On Guard, the trade paperback and it collects all six issues from the miniseries which was written by Brian K. Vaughn who first got famous for creating the Runaways, Why the Last Man, and of course Saga. Brian is already a legend. He's put his name up there with people like Frank Miller. Listen to this premise. It takes place about 100 years in the future where America is going through a water shortage and we invade Canada and take their water. It may be fiction, but it sounds very plausible. I named We Stand on Guard number one, one of the top 10 comics of 2015. So if you missed out back then, pick up the trade. Next up is Black Cloud number one. It's a story of a woman from another dimension who's on the run in our world. It's produced by Jason Latour, who's famous for creating and writing Spider-Gwen and drawing Southern Bastards. Next up is the Speculation Pick of the Week. And that's going to be Extremity number two. It's an incredible sci-fi series with a female lead that's based on revenge. It's a world where man, monsters, and machines all coexist, but they don't get along. Just looking at this cover, this shit intriguing. And by the way, Image is having a lot of success with their science fiction titles. Once The Walking Dead hit, they just gave up on superheroes altogether. Also released this week is Extremity number one going to a second print. Issue number one first print looks like this, and the second print looks like this. That's it for Image, but there's more indies such as World War Tank Girl Titan Comics. Here, have some. This character was first created in 1988 and brought into comics in 1991 in Dark Horse. Her off the wall raunchy sense of humor is a big influence on Deadpool and Harley Quinn. I like this cover right here because it reminds me of Mad Magazine. Next up is Faith number 10 from Valiant Comics. And this kind of reminds me of Ditko Spider-Man because it's a much lighter tone and her rose gallery are teaming up together like the Sinister Six would to try to take her down. If you're tired of all the seriousness comics, this is a good break from that. And so is Motor Girl number five from Abstract Studios. It's the story of a woman that owns a junkyard and gets visited by aliens. And that sounds good to me. Next up is Providence number 12 of a 12 part maxi series from Avatar Press 
Press. This is produced by Alan Moore, who is an absolute god in this business. Along with Neil Gaiman and Frank Miller, he's responsible for comics being taken seriously as literature. His best known work is Watchmen, but he's responsible for more than just that. I don't have enough time to list how deep his resume is. If you miss Providence and you like Alan Moore, pick up a trade later. Next up is Kim Reaper, number one from Oni Press. It's the story of a college student who takes a part-time job as a grim reaper. I think I'll pick this up and get the cover B variant because I like how that looks. And the premise sounds strangely entertaining. So why the heck not? And last but not least is Colossi number one from Vault Comics. With the success of Heathen, I think it's worth paying attention to what else Vault Comics is putting out there. It couldn't hurt to pick up their number ones. That's about it for today. Thank you for watching Wicked Wednesday where I review all the new comic books for a new comic day. Be sure to follow my blog at comicpower.net. On social media, follow me at facebook.com forward slash comicpower.net and comicpower-universe.tumblr.com. And don't forget twitter.com forward slash comicpowersub. I also sell comics on eBay at this link. This is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying bye bye. And don't forget to share this video, click on subscribe, give it a thumbs up and tell everyone you know about this channel to help it grow. Thank you for your support.